Welcome to <laughs> gotta get my button on it. Welcome to live stream number 180. I'm a little bit early here. Um, clock should be ticking. See if anybody wanna join us a little bit early, just giving you a chance to uh, come in here. Um, if you're watching the recording, I don't blame you if you fast forward a couple of minutes. Uh, we will get started right on top of the hour. I can see that we got Isaac here on the YouTube. Absolutely awesome. And we should also have the Facebook uh, joining us in just a second. A little bit of a delay. We got uh, Pierre, I'm assuming from, uh, from Denmark. Um, absolutely appreciate you guys taking the time. Today's topic is going from Fusion 360 to a 3D printer. Um, I have talked about this subject, topic, topic, subject, it's not my language, I'm trying to use it. Subject a while back in one of these live streams. Um, but today we're gonna deep dive into this. Um, I'm gonna share pretty much, pretty much anything I think you need to know when it comes to, um, to getting your files from Fusion 360 into uh, the slice or whatever you're gonna use for your 3D printer. So that should be exciting. Um, all right, let's see here. I'm just gonna update the, the Facebook. I'm gonna hit the right computer. I'm just gonna update the Facebook just to make sure that uh, we are on there. It looks like it. And I can see we got David here. I absolutely appreciate it. Andrew, and yet we are on the, uh, on the Facebook. Hello, Facebook. Hello, YouTube. Absolutely appreciate it. Um, you will find uh, down in the description of this video that I l pretty much brought all the files that I'm gonna be using today. You will find links to all those so you can get them yourself. Um, you will also, of course, find um, the link to uh, the Toronto event coming up uh, the 19th. I've talked about that one in the last few days. So if you are in Toronto, uh, come and uh, and hang out with uh, with me. Um, there will also be an event in Novi, Michigan. Um, there will be Montreal. I'm going to Boston, I think, soon. San Francisco. Yeah, there's a bunch of places. So we can definitely, uh, would love to... Uh, you know, buy your drink or something. All right, I can see that uh, we are we are filling up here with people. That's absolutely absolutely awesome. Like I said, today's topic is going from Fusion 360 to your 3D printer. Something that I got a few requests for, and hopefully, um, hopefully today is when we're gonna get everything sorted out, and everybody uh, should be happy. So, with 61 people in the YouTube, and I'm not quite sure how many people we got on the Facebook, but that's okay. Um, absolutely awesome to see you. Let me let me just get rid of uh, of this clock here, and then we get we get going. Maybe, maybe not. Let me try that again. There we go. Hey everybody. My name is Lars Christensen, and thank you so much for joining today's live stream. It is number 180, and the topic today is how to go from Fusion 360 to your 3D printer. Something that covered in the past, um, but gotten some inquiries from you guys. My email address is down in the description area um, that people wanted to know more about this. I'm going to pretty much cover as much as I can that uh, today. and. Um, what else? Email address down there. Files are down there. Check out the description of this uh, of these videos. There, uh, the CNC free CNC hamburgers down there. All kinds of stuff. So let's <laughs> really appreciate you taking the time. Let's uh, let's get into uh, let's get into Fusion 360. Let's talk about um, going from Fusion 360 to a uh, 3D printer. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it inside of of, um, of Fusion. Um, one is to go up here and click on the 3D print uh, button up here. That is one way. I can't sound that. Could also hit the drop down and select 3D print there. Then you actually get a couple of other things you probably want to uh, test out at some point. You could also go over and click on the drop down here and select 3D print. Same dialog, same way to do it. I think preferably I like to hit this one. The other one uh, that has a little bit of an extra feature is if you right click up here and uh, you can click save as STL. So 3D printers normally want STLs um, and you can click on that and that will give you uh, another 
uh, function I'm going to talk about uh, just in a second here. But let's uh, just take a quick walkthrough through the menu. Um, and this is hopefully the video that you have needed to, uh, when you're done with this, if I do a decent job, you should feel pretty good about getting your files from Fusion 360 into, uh, into your 3D printer. And like I said, files are down, I'm going to use today, are down in the description area. So I'm going to start out by clicking the 3D print. Start from the top, work your way down anytime you're getting these menus. And um, you can click on the file, that's like your selection. You can turn on a preview mesh. Uh, so if you're looking at the file here, you will see that it kind of like got shaded uh, with a, a mess. And um, for, <laughs> I don't want to get in trouble. Uh, <laughs> I have in the past talked about STL files that I'm not a huge fan of them. And some people have gotten a little offended, but calm down. It's all good. I don't have anything against STL files per se, other then it's just made up of triangles. So what happens when you create a SEL file is you're getting a triangular mesh thrown all over, um, all over your file. What means that if I turn the preview mesh off, this is the file that we created, look for example at this arc right here on the outside and this hole, when you turn this into a STL file, then it places a bunch of triangles, meaning that this is actually not a full arc anymore. It is a triangular mesh that is, that is creating now this arc. The reason that I'm not a big fan of that is because it's just not as accurate as a full-blown arc. Now, I'm saying that fully understanding why the 3D printing companies did use STL files in the beginning. It was because it was the easiest thing to do. And back in the day, uh, it was not, you know, it wasn't that accurate to 3D print. So it wasn't that important. That was why they went with it. Fine, I'm not, I'm not mad at anybody, but the fact is an STL file is not as accurate as a full blown solid model like we're creating inside of uh, Fusion 360. Where I see the biggest problem with it is that many times it can be hard to control the size of those triangles because that's going to control um you know the accuracy of your 3d print now inside of this dialog box you do have refinements so this um this is a keychain of the autodesk a again file down the description area you will see that right now that is created by 1154 triangles you do get a refinement option in here where you can control how many triangles um, Fusion is going to throw on this model. Um, so that is, that is a good thing. Um, and you can actually go into refinement options and you can literally uh, play with it and, and do whatever you want uh, with or create as many as you want. Now, um, the, the reason I wanted to talk just two seconds about this triangular size is remember if you are downloading a file from like Thingiverse or some other web page where you maybe can't control that accuracy of your model. So if you're downloading a file from, I'm just saying Thingiverse or any other place where you can download STL files for 3D printing, if you get a bad result when you 3D print, it might be because of those triangles. But instead of Fusion, you can do different ones. Um, high, if I click high here, you see it go up to 24. Now, I don't, if you're just printing stuff for kind of fun, um, I would probably normally go with a medium that's probably fine um, for, for to start out with at least. And then if you need to go go higher, go higher. But it's going to take, if you, as, if you go higher, it's going to take longer for the slicing software to uh, generate if you want to create any lattices inside of the file and so forth. Leave it on medium for this. You don't need any refinement option. And then you get an option down here to send it out to a 3D uh, print utility. Now, if you turn it off and you hit OK, then it's just going to save this out as an STL file and not open it up in anything. It's just going to save it as an STL file to, for example, your desktop, and then you can open it up in uh, whatever slicer that your 3D printer are using, if it is using any. So, actually, some 3D printers 
just you bring in the SCL file on a thumb drive and you don't do anything other than just print with it. But this here, if you have that unchecked, click on that again, if you have this unchecked, it will just save it out as an STL file. We're going to do that just in a second. Now, if you click on Print Utility, you will see that you get uh, some different options in here. Now, this is, uh, whoops, this is Autodesk Products. I'm a big fan of the Mess Mixer. Let me select the file again so we have it here. I'm a big fan of, uh, of Max, uh, Mess Mixer here. If I click OK to this, Fusion will open this file up in uh in this mess mess mixer um environment here so here you can see the file um i brought out the ultimaker 3d printer um but you will see up here on uh, the drop down that mess mixer and mess mixer is free um you will see there's all different kinds of printers in here and really what this does here is just giving you an option to kind of lay it out on the bed so you can kind of like preview it um but Mess Mixer can do a lot uh, in here that you, you probably should be, if you're doing 3D printing, probably should be aware of that Mess Mixer is available because you can do a lot of different things in here. You can actually completely rechange and re-sculpt uh, whatever STL file you have in here. Um, actually, a lot of, this, um, of the Mess tools inside of Fusion 360, talked about that in other live streams, uh, are coming from Mess Mixer. So Mess Mixer is very, very powerful. But what you can do in here, uh, for example, go to Edit, and uh, you could, for example, align this part with the with the bed. So now it's sitting down on the bed here. If I hit Accept, it's sitting down on the bed. You will also see that there is a transform in here. So I can actually grab uh, the part and maybe move it around uh, on the, on the bed here. And, um, and whenever you're done with the, the mess mixer here, you now get a chance. You can either, again, save it out as an STL file, um, but you can, of course, also just hit print and send it to, to whatever printer you, were, you want. That is a mess mixer. Very important for you to know that that is uh, available. And I just kind of like took you through uh, that menu here with the mess mixer. But you should also know that there is also in the drop down here there's something called custom so if you have a 3d printer like the ultimaker that actually has its own slicing software where you can kind of like see the bed and you can do all different kinds of things you can set that up so the custom tab will open up whatever you use so for example here if i go in and i set it if i go into my it's going to be my c drive and I'm going to go into uh, to program files, and in here I downloaded uh, the Ultimaker Cura. That's their program, and double click on the executable. Now that is set, that whenever I hit OK here, uh, now Cura from Ultimaker will open up. And and I actually also placed a link for the download for this here, just so if you want to want to take a look at the Ultimaker Cura. That is a totally open source too. So um, if you are uh, if 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 you are into deep into the 3D uh, world, Ultimaker is uh, is is a great great um, great product for that kind of stuff. You'll see that it also placed the A in here on the Ultimaker table. I set it up for the Ultimaker S5, what is the latest? Um, and the cool thing about Cura versus maybe Mess Mixer is that you have in here the menus for, of course, their specific printers. The Ultimaker S5 have different extruders, two different extruders on it. This is where you can load up all the different materials you're running with, stuff like that. I'm not gonna tell you that I'm a Cura uh, expert, but I just wanted to kind of bring this up so you see both of them. So this is it's not an Autodesk product. Uh, this is a completely different product, but the Cura works pretty nice too. You can right click and select uh, a model here. Um, you can uh, place that wherever you want on the bed. You can go in here and you can hit the rotate button, and now you can uh, now you can 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 kind of flip it around. Now come back to uh, Cura just in a second. Let me just exit out of this. Um, I wanted to show, but I wanted to show you another thing. So this is not just. I mean, that was a a quick walkthrough on how you do it. Uh, all done. Well, <laughs> we all know that in real life it's not this simple, is it? Um, <laughs> So um, let me go in here and uh, just skip over to another file here. 
um, looks about the same, right? Pretty much the same, except, oh, let me just rotate it. Like they came out of the same, uh, same oven. Well, check this out. This second file here, if I click make, and we're gonna go with the same settings, so we can select the same A, um, and this time we can again select the Cura or the Mess Mixer, doesn't really, uh, doesn't really matter in this instance. Let me just hit okay. Let Max Mixer open up and uh, notice what happened now. Our A is, um, <laughs> it is actually upside down. Not great. Um, now, luckily for us, um, these print utility tools have uh, some great examples on why you are great tools that you can you can move this around. So again, if I go into edit, I could hit transform. Um, and now I could grab uh, one of these handles and I could kind of like lay it down, double click over here on rotation and type in 90 degrees to make sure it's 90, except that. Uh, and then I could again align it and I'm kind of back to, to where I want. But I wanted to show you this because you might be like, wait a minute, why was that upside down? And I know this has happened to a lot of people who uh, have modeled uh, inside of Fusion 360. I get this question quite a bit. Why is this one upside down where the first one was not? Well, it comes to the triad up here inside of Fusion. So if you're looking up here, you will see the first file, the Z or the Z axis is up. In the second file, the Z or the Z axis is along this axis and the Y is up. Um, and if you, I'm gonna come to this file, we're gonna come back to this file just in a second. Some of you guys know this file fairly well. <laughs> Maybe you have uh, used the Absolute Beginner series. Uh, if you have not modeled this one up yet, then uh, um, that's fine. <laughs> but if you model this one up and you wanted to 3D print this one, you found that it doesn't come in uh, in the right rotation. You have to flip it. And I wanted to give you an explanation on why that is and then give you the solution because if I didn't, what is the <laughs> explanation without a solution? Um, the reason is that um, when CAD companies started out way back in the 80s and 90s, um, the CAD companies decided that uh, Y was gonna be up and front was the default view. Now, if you're like me and you're doing manufacturing or 3D printing as we're talking about today, you will say, wait a minute, um, why is front the default view? Wouldn't it make more sense the top is? It's kind of like you're placing down and you're looking down on top. I agree with you, but CAD companies back then, there was no rules. They decided that front is the zero face and therefore the Y is, is sticking up. That means, and, and I'm still doing that out of old habit. Uh, I'm still modeling like this. If you're, ever, if you're ever watching, if I'm opening up a new file, you will see that I still have the Y up. Uh, so when I go in here and start sketching inside of Fusion, just get something up here, extrude this up, just like that. Um, I'm still modeling with the Y up because, well, just out of old habit, but from a 3D printing standpoint, when I bring this one into our slice or into Mess Mix or Cura, um, it would actually be laying down on the side and I would have to, to flip it. The solution, let me exit out of this, don't say this. The solution, oh, we're gonna to come to this in a second, is go to your name, go to your preferences, and flip the default model on orientation to Z or set, depending on where you are in the world, up. Hit apply and okay. Now, when I open a new file, you will see that it have changed the direction of that. And from now on, when you're moving forward, you never have to worry about that anymore. Whatever you're modeling as top, that will also be top in um, inside of your, your Mess Mixer Cura or um, whatever other software that uh, you decide to use. So that was just a little tip within um, this whole scenario here, uh, the importance of, of knowing that little trick so you don't have to, to mess around with that. Now, um, so we have figured out the first one. We could print out the, the A here. We talked about the orientation. Now, let's go in and talk um, about 
a, another model and a little bit about what I would call best practices when you are bringing uh, files um, in and out of, uh, of your software. So this heart here did this on a long time ago on a live stream. It's gotta been like before live stream number 50. And um, if you, and again, you can download this in the description area. If you look on this one, it's created up by, well, one surface that is hidden and two bodies. So there is a, there is a lid. Um, there's the lid. Okay. And then there is a, uh, a body here. Now, um, just so you know, and, and this is another live stream too, there is no clearance between the lid and the body. I'll talk about clearances just in a second here. But what I'm getting at is this is a multi multi body part multi yeah multi body part right there's two bodies in here um and if you are going to 3d print this part you wouldn't print it like this um and the reason you would not print it like this is because you kind of like want uh the lid placed um you know to the side on the print table so you kind of like have two prints going one is the lid and one is the bottom and then hopefully they fit together <laughs> uh, in in the end um, because if you're printing it out of one, you wouldn't get you know the parting line between the between the lid and the and the bottom here. So how do you work with that? Well, if you go up and use uh, the 3D print option up here and hit 3D print, then um, you will see that you can really only select one or the other. So we can select the bottom. And then we could either just open that up in Mess Mixer. Uh, but then if we then after that selected the top, we would get two instances of Mess Mixer, um, two different, the program, well, let me show you. So if I go in here now and say, all right, I'm gonna select the bottom, hit okay. Now we're gonna see that Mess Mixer is gonna open up. And again, our orientation is, uh, is wrong in here. So we would, because again, how I model this up, now you know how to fix it. We can just go over here to Mess Mixer, go into Transform. You could select this red one, move it down 90 degrees. We could then accept that. We could hit Align, that'll bring it down to the bottom. Accept that, and uh, then we could move over here, and maybe with a little bit of creativity, we could move uh, one over here like this, and we could say, okay, that's good. Now we wanna bring the lid in. Uh, well, if we go back into Fusion and we now hit the 3D print button again and uh, select the top here and and check the mess mixer like right here and hit OK. Now it's just going to open up another instance of mess mixer. It doesn't know that um, that we wanted to bring we wanted to bring that into to the original one. What we would have to do uh, instead would be we could save out the lid instead of hitting print to print utility we could just hit okay like this save this body out to our desktop save that out now it's out of my desktop as a standard file then we can go into mess mixer now we could import it uh append it back in but this is too much work Bring it in like this, right? Now you can see the lid is back in. This is way too much work. There's a much better way to do this. The trick to do this is, instead, is to right click up here and go and say, save as STL. Now when I do that, and don't mind this big arc shadow, that's just because I scaled uh, the part. I'll show you that in a little bit. Um, when you right click up here and say save at STL, now you actually get an extra option up here where you can decide to save out uh, each file. So if one body per file is the better way to say this. So now you actually, when you save this to one file per body, and remember we have two bodies in here. Now we actually end up with two files um, on our desktop. So the, we're not gonna save this to the print uh, utility. You can save it um, right out. I actually haven't, you can't even turn on the print utility here. It won't let you do that. Uh, so here I'm gonna say this, 
and hit OK. And uh, we already had that file. That, that was the previous one. I just saved out. We we'll delete that one. Um, whoops. Right click, save as CL. Make sure one file per body. Hit OK and save this out. But it's, it looks like it's just going to save one file, but it's actually going to save two files uh, out on our desktop. Um, instead of opening it in a mess mixer now, let's open it up in Cura again. Just find Cura here and turn that on. Do, 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 do. It's loading up here on my other screen. It's loading interface. Boom, that was the Cura from Ultimaker. Now, if we went here and went up to, we can click on the little folder up here and go to the desktop, you will see that it actually created two different hot files. And if I double select both, um, you will see that both of them get, get brought in here. And now again, because of my orientation, I would definitely have to, uh, to work with these. So again, I can select one of these files. I can go ahead here and say, I want to rotate it. So I'm gonna rotate this down 90 degrees. I can say lay it flat. So that is now flat on the table. I can select the other file, rotate that. Cure actually works really nice for this. Lay that down. And then we can go over here to the move command. And now we could kind of place these two files. Maybe go to the top view. Um, so it's not a bad place. Place these two files the way we wanted it. Um, and then go in and work with the materials and things like that inside of, of the Cura. So my point is that if you have more file or more components, more bodies, the, the, what I recommend is that you right click and use the STL file um, so you, get, you can save it out per files. That brings me to uh, the box here. So if you did do this box, um, you, you learned that in the beginning, we kind of used what is called on the forum, people are calling it rule number one, that we started out in the beginning by modeling a one component for the box, one component for the lid before we even started drawing anything. And then we modeled everything up. We brought in the two screws from McMaster, hide those for a second. So this is what I recommend you make it a habit of uh, versus the heart. And, and what, I'm, what I'm talking about is make components as a, as a habit versus bodies, okay? Because to me, and this is just, this is just me talking. So I mean, like, you, <laughs> I'm not the boss of you. You do whatever you, what you want whatever you want to do. But in my mind, at least for what it's worth, making it components is, well, that's how things are in, how it would be in real life. It would be two different separate part. Bodies are more like, it's more like clay because we can combine bodies. We can do different things with bodies. Well, components are two separate parts. And that is what we, what we are having here uh, with the lid. Now it's going to react the exact same way with the components as it did with the with the bodies but i just think that from a best practice standpoint creating these components and that also means you can create like sub components in here too uh what is maybe another day uh, but again if i was going to print this out i would absolutely model it up just like you see it on the screen and then when it comes to actually printing it i would right click up here save it as an stl then I would make sure we have one file per body, play with your, your refinement. I wouldn't send it right to the print utility. I would just send it out to uh, wherever. Um, now we're gonna work with a box file. Um, it's gonna create, because again, there's two components. It's gonna create two STL files. And uh, if we go in here, create a new project inside of Cura. New files, new projects, a new project. Do you want to? No. Oh, let's just get rid of these. If we go in here, let's go and hit the file open. And if we select the box, the two box ones, we could maybe fit them all on the, maybe we could fit them all on the same build plate. I don't know. Um, we get this one in again. You will see my, my uh, 
delay here is not right uh, because when I model this up, I didn't use best practices, right? Bad liars. Um, but of course, like I just showed you, it's fairly easy in uh, Cura or in Mex Mess Mixer, whatever which one you uh, printer you have, to uh, kind of lay this, get this laid out, uh, flatten it out, work with it. Oops, I got it moved here. Uh, whatever. Select the right component. You get what I'm saying here. I think uh, this is definitely something for you to uh, to work with. So um, last thing I want to show you is this file, and then I'm gonna then I'm gonna let you go. Uh, this file you can also find down in uh, the description area of this video if you came in late. This was something. This goes back to my whole discussion a while back about putting clearances in to your part. So by default, and, and some people disagree with me, and that's okay. By default in the CAD world, we don't model tolerances in the parts because tolerances many times comes down to what machine you need to machine it up. However, if I am modeling things up that I know that I got a 3D print on my specific machine, yes, then I probably would. And, well, I would, I wouldn't, not probably, but I would model it up with clearances in it. Now you need to know how, bad, how good your printer is, what the tolerances are, and that comes to uh, this part, and again, you can find the link to this in the description area. This was something I used to do a lot um, whenever I got a new machine to test it out. So what this is, it's a gauge. Now you can completely modify this design. This part is actually probably too big for a standard 3D printer, or you have to print it out in two, two rounds or something. But the idea is that you can see the diameter of uh, these different uh, four different rods here on the end, right? Uh, so this is, uh, this is in inches, but you can see that they are different sizes and so are the openings over in this part over here. This will give you an idea about clearances. How much smaller do we have to make a nail size and how much bigger do we have to make a cavity to make something on your 3D printer to fit together. So that, friends, was what I was planning on showing today. So I definitely would say that if you are not feeling more comfortable about how to bring a file from Fusion 360 to your 3D printer, I did not do a good job and uh, you need to give me a thumbs down on this video. But just to re or re recap, if you have a one body file, just use the 3D print. You can send it right to whatever your favorite print utility is. Don't forget you can customize it to whatever you like. I use the Ultimaker Cura. Don't forget about, you can refine the refinement of the triangles right here. If your part is flipped upside down when you're bringing it into uh, your into your utility, uh, then go to your preferences, change this to be Z up instead of Y up. That's probably why the orientation is off. Whenever you have multiple bodies, I do recommend components like in the, the electric box here. Instead of hitting the 3D print, then right click save as an STL, and now you can actually save this out as multiple files. So every, so each, it's each component in its own STL file, and it's all aligned with whatever origin you used in here, okay? And lastly, and again, all these files are down in the description area. Lastly, go ahead, print this out, make a test, find out how accurate your machine is, that will help you uh, how to build in any tolerances you need behind uh, between the lids uh, and so forth. Friends, YouTube, Facebook, I hope this was useful. You let me know. Thumbs up if this was good. If this was, if this was bad, I need to know. Thumbs down. Comment area. Absolutely. Feel free. I would love to hear from you. Um, just put something down in the comment. I read them all. I reply on pretty much 99% of them. If I missed them, then I'm sorry. Check out the description area of these videos. There's all kinds of free stuff down there. My email, files, free and handbook. 
That's all. Thursday, live stream 180 is over. Tomorrow is all about camp. But I have a surprise. Tomorrow, I think, I'm not quite sure yet. We might either gonna do XD free, uh, do some free access inside of Fusion 360, or um, maybe we look at Power Mill. Hmm, that would be interesting. Friends, I really appreciate your time. I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. And uh, until the next time, take care.